What's going on, Portal fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to review Showdown 45. Another disappointing day at the office for the Porto Mode 45. But nonetheless, we have to go through and have a look exactly uh, and see what happened on the day. Keep this short and sweet. That blue, so yeah, let's go through what was a very, very disappointing day. Look, I know a lot of people expect. Um, few things mentioned about the decision at the end to uh, call it a goal. I know a lot of people will take it as a, you know, a, a stab in the heart for Port this year. But look, to be honest, at least our destiny is in our own hands. We've got to win the last three games to give ourselves any chance of still making the top four and even top eight. So, look, I feel if we dwell over the negatives from the showdown, which, I look, to be honest... There can be, there was quite a few, but look, I thought on the weekend, our ball movement, our um, players were just exceptional when we had the opportunity to go score. We've been crying out for opportunities to score inside 50 and not waste them. We did that. We got out the back. We counter-attacked brilliantly, um, and the likes of Kane Farrell got involved in the game. Robbie Gray and Chad Wingard put on a show uh, for all Port fans that were there at the game and also, you know, for the rest of us that were watching uh, on TV or at Alberton or wherever you were watching because, yeah, it was a Crows home game, but it did really feel like Port Adelaide fans got a lot of noise in and the roar for every goal was just exceptional. So a credit to the Port fans as well. But look, I'll, I'll mention, like, the goal line technology is a farce at the moment and I feel, you know, we, we rely on it too much. We don't um, take the umpire, goal umpire's decision. I'd rather, you know... Jenkins kicked whatever it was, a goal or a point, and the umpire call it a goal and move on. Not Jenkins call out, say it's a, he hit, it hit the post, we go to the review system, and within 10 seconds it's already been called a goal because we're only listening, looking at one camera angle. We're a billion dollar industry and we're not even using all our options and we're not even bothering to go and expand our options because we're just lazy and we prefer to... Put, put, invest money in other situations like changing the rules. There was a few other key aspects of that game where we lost, and I'm just going to run them through quickly for you, because I know you know it's, it's Tuesday now that this has come out. The game was on Saturday. We've already moved on to this uh, to this week's game against West Coast, and I just want to give my review because um, this is the first chance I've had. So, key moments that changed the game: Ollie Wines kick a drop punt. It's not that hard. You're 15 metres, 20 metres out from goal and you decide to go a banana because you're on a slight angle. Even I could kick that. My nana could kick that. It's as simple as that. Contested possessions. We lost the game at the... Lost the game at the contest on the weekend. 166 to 149 contested possessions. We were just outplayed, outmuscled. 50 extra possessions the Crows had um, across the day as well. Um, and our highest possession getter was Polek with 24. So... If you're getting low numbers like that, you're not going to win every single game of the year. Um, you know, it's a credit to our players that we just stood up and took every opportunity, kicked straight um, and kicked some goals. And look, early on, we um, really let them get out of the box. And I really think that especially since um, last year we got absolutely flogged uh, in the game early, this year we was especially really good because uh, we fought back, we got level with the scores, it was level throughout the whole day. The game didn't get out to any further than a three goals for the day. Um, and out credit to us, we fought hard. And we, that was a finals-like game, finals atmosphere um, against the grind, and we fought back really well. So that's a real positive. Um, and for our percentage inside 50, we had 47 inside 50s to 69. They had way more opportunities to Crows, but in the end, um, we you know had a 51% conversion rate going inside 50, which is... Pretty good. Um, and, you know, you had the big names getting on the scoreboard. Robbie with four, Chad with four. Kane Farrell, the youngster, was the side act kicking three. The skipper, Boak, with two. But DBJ even got on the scoreboard. Um, none of our tools hit the scoreboard. Dixon, Watts, or Westhoff, which was a little disappointing. But Dixon created the contest. He was out of the chase run. Um, Watts was a bit quiet again. Uh, Westhoff was just his normal roaming around at the contest, really uh, setting up the play up. Uh, higher up the ground so look to be honest these these negatives are very fixable and from what it was a few weeks ago where we were crying out with there's so many holes in our game plan it was actually pretty well structured and how good was Paddy Ryder 
to hold that structure again against Jacobs, dominated the hitouts, um, and in the end, look, the only thing that really lost us the game was two situations, two key decisions, and Ollie Wines could have kicked the goal and won us the game, finished the game off, or, you know, they could have called a point and actually detailed uh, that score review system. Look, these things are very fixable, and from a personal point of view, from Port Adelaide's perspective, it's a real positive. I know we didn't get the four points, but we are meant to play finals, and anyone that's questioning that, you look at our record against top eight teams. We're meant to be there. If we get there or not, it's a, just a question of winning these last three games. But no doubt, if we make it, we deserve to be there. So um, little holes need to be fixed. Uh, and as well, you would have heard during the uh, Monday, I think it was, Voss, uh, Michael Voss and Chad Corns are both signed on for uh, contract, contract extensions as well. Um, and Aaron Greaves and uh, Matthew Nix are heading off back home. And I think Nixie's going off to uh, GWS. So we wish him all the best. Um, thank you for their service. And it'd be nice to get some fresh blood in the coach's box with Kenny Hinckley, who... Obviously, was visibly angry on the weekend in the press conference. Um, probably the heat of the moment type thing, blaming. You know, you, you get angry in these situations, and we all were. Uh, but in the end, you know, we all only got ourselves to blame. We can't adapt to wet weather footy as good as other teams. We did take our opportunities still, but, you know, we just got to stop overusing, overusing the ball coming out. We, took, we definitely took a more attacking style going forward. That was brilliant to watch. But the problem was the fact that we overused the ball going forward and in the end, by the time we got to the centre square, coughed up or it was um, put into danger and we ended up just, you know, back and forth. And it was just a very tiring game from, um, you know, our ball skills. And look, to be honest, they weren't as bad as a few weeks ago. But yeah, it, it was a tough game. And I know, you know, you look at this and you just think, well, um, where to from here? I know we lost the showdown. It's a tough pill to swallow. But we just got to get up and play another brand of footy, another Port Adelaide style of footy this week against West Coast. So it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, we've got to still have had a good, very good opportunity. And, yeah, it's just one we just have to live and let live and forget. But in saying that, let's look at the votes for the weekend. All right, the votes, as you know, Port fans, three votes for a loss, five votes for a win. Let's just get straight into it. One vote goes to Dan Houston. Mint performance down back, Husto. There was not a problem to be seen uh, from his perspective. 21 disposals, 8 marks in that type of game. He really stood out for me. Um, and he's really having a great, consistent um, year at the moment. It was looking like he might miss out a few weeks ago. Uh, but he's really stepped up his game. Big in big. He was big in big moments. He was uh, really helping out the likes of Jonas and uh, Cleary down there as well. Uh, Homps had a very poor day, so it was good to see Husto really helping out down there. Two votes goes to Chad Wingard, who the Crows fans absolutely hate. Uh, four goals, 16 touches, was just big, was huge in big moments. You know, all these players were big in the stages we needed them to be. Chad Wingard, two goals in the last, uh, in the first half, three goals in the first half, actually. And then, you know, in the last quarter as well, he was just really um, creating an option up forward as well, back to his normal Chad Wingard best. And three votes goes to the showdown medalist, who is a record showdown medal winner with four medals in total. Robbie Gray. Four goals, 20 disposals, five marks, 12 contested possessions. And I reckon all Crows fans on the weekend would have just been watching, thinking, great, he's going to do a number, us, number on us again. So credit to Robbie. I know booed when he received the medal, and it was a very poor form, and booing shouldn't be condoned in any circumstance. Well, no matter who the player, who the team, and who the supporters, it's not on. Uh, but it was just a credit to see Robbie step up and carry his team all the way to the end of the game like we did on the weekend. A three-point loss that we couldn't uh, really control in the end. Unfortunately, we went down, but we move on to next week. Well, poor fans, that wraps up this uh, round 20 review of Port Adelaide versus Adelaide. Showdown 45. Didn't get the result we were after. Going to take a this, look at this a bit positive, positively. Um, I know we're not going to... Look at this game too often, but three games to go. It's a very nerve-wracking and anxious time to be a port, to be a port fan. Um, but we will grind it out. Port Adelaide style, stick together, get to the game this weekend. Preview comes out on Thursday, so 
Make sure you check that out. Thank you very much for watching, Port fans. Make sure you tune into the Portraits Podcast 8 p.m. every Wednesday night. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new. For plenty more Port Adelaide content coming your way on a weekly basis. And also check out my new AFL Footy Podcast, Footy Chat Podcast. Out. Uh, the new episode is out now, so make sure you check that out as well. Thanks for watching, Port fans. My name's Anthony. As per usual, come the pair. Bloody thing hit the damn post.